So I'm here today at the Festival of Quilts. How lucky am I? We haven't had it for a year, so it's a real honour to be here. And even more so, to be able to interview the fantastic and wonderful and talented Kay Fassett. So welcome to the Festival of Quilts. Well, thank you very much. And what a fantastic thing to be here at last. Huh? At last, at last. I feel, I feel like we've waited for seven years for this. It does feel this. a bit like that, yeah. doesn't it? Thank you for joining us today. I know that you're a really busy person. You've got a lot mm. to do, and so to join us is really, really kind of you. So, um, most people know about your history, that you were born in San Francisco and you started your career as a fine artist. Um, so I wanted to know, as a child, what did you want to be? Wow. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing question. Um, something theatrical, I think. I was always painting myself and putting on costumes mm. and appearing in public <laughs> as some weird persona. So I love the idea of dressing up and being on a stage. And in fact, I went to uh, a drama school when I was quite young, a uh, teenager. Okay. And um, I think that that prepared me to be kind of in the public eye, as well as doing mm. the other things that I do. So how did you end up deciding to go to fine arts school then? Uh, I, I had a wonderful uh, teacher of dance and she was mm. very powerful woman. Tamiris was her name. And she <laughs> said to me, don't fool yourself, Kafe, that you're going to be a dancer or something on stage. You're, go back to your art. That's where you're strongest. Okay. And I took her advice and I really got stuck into my fine art. So that's what you, Yeah, so that, that's that what was you my big my real ambition was to be a painter and to have a, you know a reputation, you know the great artists of the time were very abstract expressionist mm. at that time. You know de Kooning and Franz Klein and so forth and I was painting little teacups okay. and teapots and little flowery cloths and things but I kind of believed in myself. Uh, it was hard because mm. those times, you know, to be very abstract and wild was the name of the game. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So when you first started art, did you know what direction you were going to go in? Did you think at that stage, I'm going to be a fabric designer, I'm going to use colour, I'm going to design knitting? I think I've always been a romantic who looked back at history mm. and <clears throat> loved you know, the old historical costumes and the, um, the panache of the past. And to me, the, the, the future or, or, or the present seemed very pedestrian and dull. I mean, as I look back at it now, there was a lot of extraordinary things happening in the, in the 50s and 60s mm. and 70s and but so maybe forth. Maybe you didn't realize them at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the 70s got more interesting because we got the hippies coming along yeah. and, and putting on pattern on pattern and anything out of a charity shop and making it mm. cool, particularly when I came to England. And I, the English girls were so inventive. What they would do with a charity shop find and make these wonderful outfits out of tablecloths and, <laughs> and you know, African robes and things like that. It was wonderful to see that. Okay. So you thought maybe you'd go into painting? Yes, I, I, I was definitely going to be a fine artist. I was going to be very strict about it. And I um, was, you know, had a good gallery in New York and I was painting up big collections of paintings and bringing mm -hmm. them. But um, I discovered knitting in, so in the middle of all that. So that leads me nicely onto knitting. So yes. at Sewing Street, we have a sister channel called Yarn Lane. Yeah. And we're on air four times a week. And we've sold quite a lot of your patterns. Right. And we made kits and we've sold the Rowan Felted Tweed that you've done. So we're really interested in your knitting. Now, I know yeah. that you learnt on a train. Yeah. Because you went up to Scotland. Yeah. Why did you end up at a Scottish, Scottish knitting well, mill? Well, because I, I had a, this amazing relationship with a... With a young, extraordinarily talented designer. He was a little farm boy from the north of Scotland, but he had this incredible talent. And he was Bill Gibb. I mean, he was, he was like the Yves Saint Laurent of London at that time. Wow. I, mean, I mean, he came up from nothing and I watched him come mm. up through school and I could see that his drawings were fabulous and he had this incredible thing. So anyway, he said, I'm going 
to my native land and I'm going to look at the old tartans of the past and I'm going to get fabrics that I'm going to use in my fashions. And I said, I want to go along with you because I think you should be putting pattern together with pattern. I'm looking at old Indian paintings and, and Persian paintings where they mixed patterns all together. And I said, I think that would be a good direction But at that stage, you hadn't done any knitting or knitwear design no, or anything? No, not at all. Um, and when, when he brought me to this mill where they were weaving this incredible plaid, there were these beautiful knitting yarns to go along with the plaids. Okay. And they were all these, looked like vegetable dyed colors, mm. very natural, very landscapey. They were the most beautiful, elegant colors I'd ever seen. And so I bought 20 and jumped on the train and got a woman to teach me how to knit <laughs> on the way back to London. What did you do, stand London. up in the carriage and go, can anyone knit? <laughs> I, well, so I, well, there was actually a woman in our group that right. knew, knew how to knit. And I said to her, I, you've got to teach me right now because I can't imagine how I'm going to tell somebody to knit these beautiful colors and have it come out right. So what, was, what did you find hard? You know, for new knitters out there, you would just learn, you sat there on the train, what was hard, what was easy? Well, what, made you keep what, going? What, what was hard for me was mm. to bake white bread. You know, <laughs> if I was going to bother to cook, I was going to, they were going to be showstoppers. They were going to be party pieces. Right, okay. You know, so I put 20 colors in my first uh, garment. Uh, and I never wanted, and, you know, one day I did sit down and try to knit something in beige. I thought it was going to go out of my mind. Right. I never knew where I had stopped or started. You know, it was just this endless task, yeah. whereas knitting with patterns and color, you're this little part of the pattern, and mm. you, you keep at it, you know, you, you, you miss your lunch. And well, a bit like the sampler scarf you designed. Yeah. It's just fantastic. I mean, it must take hours and hours to knit. It's the most beautiful But there are hours thing. that are easy to, so lovely. to give because you're, you're mm. going up this little zigzag and then into this little checkerboard and into this little beautiful. flower print. You know, it's, that's what draws me into knitting is the wonderful exploration of patterns. So what comes first for you? Is it the actual design? Is it the colors or is it the stitches? It's always the color. Always. The color is the most motivating thing. And then how do you put that color into forms? Like, first of all, I, I was doing little Fair Isle patterns mm. like everyone does. Yeah. And I realized that it just looked like kind of vomit in the wind. You know, it, 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 there was no, you didn't get a sense of color. You didn't mm. get a stab of red next to vibrant emerald green, right. you know? Yeah. And I wanted that. So I started doing bigger bits of pattern so that it would read like mm. your necklace, you know, these wonderful <laughs> flowers, you know, that are sharp. I wanted that delineation of color. So that comes first. Yeah. And then, you know, so that the patterns came to facilitate the use of the color. Have you ever tried crochet? I love crochet. And it's, when it's beautifully done, there's, I noticed there's one quilt in this exhibition that has got crocheted bits to it, mm. beautifully done. But I don't, I can go around in a circle and make right. a hat. But not lines and lines. <laughs> no, 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 I can't do straight lines. We need to go on a train journey. Yeah, I'll yeah. teach you to crochet. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Because I think it's a beautiful craft. Um, so I know you're still designing for Rowan. Yeah. And working with them on choosing yarns and things. So how do you go about, what's the design process with them? How do you decide what yarn that you want to put in the collection with them? You know, I'm, my whole thing in life is giving quilters and knitters a palette. You know, right. a paint box. Mm. And so you want them to have all the possibilities. So you want lovely, soft pastels. But there's, what I figure, I looked at the range of yarns that are going around. There's a lot of gray, there's a lot of neutral, there's mm. a lot of soft, don't scare the horses colors. I wanted to scare the horses. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to get a bit of jive and jazz mm. into this thing and make it sexier. So I started getting vibrant yellows and beautiful lavenders and scarlets and, and black and things like that so that there was a real crunch when you needed it. I love to combine it with all the soft, neutral colors uh, and make some... Well, you, you do know, that a lot in your quilts as well, I do. isn't there? There's a big juxtaposition of the sort of the pastels against the really brights anyway. And, and yeah. the same, I presume, applies to the yarn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, is choosing colours for yarn different to you for choosing colours for, for fabric? Yes, because every stitch of yarn that you make has a little shadow in it. Okay. And so it becomes more intense. Uh, it also can get drabber, you know, because mm. it, you know, when you think you've got a bright color, if it's slightly dusty, when you knit it up, it's dustier because you've got a little shadow on every right. little stitch. So the texture of it, um, you have to be a little bit bolder and stronger so with your color than you think. Okay, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So if we move on to fabric now, yeah. when you decide, right, I'm going to design a new fabric collection, where do you start? How, what's the first well, thing? The, the, the way I started my whole fabric collection was to go to India and get woven fabrics done. Right. And so I had these okay. beautiful woven stripes and shot mm. cottons. So th 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 that was a wonderful thing of fiber, you know, crossing fiber so you would get two different colors crossing each other and giving you this kind of mercurial fabric. So that was a very exciting thing. Um, and then they said, you know, we've got these lovely stripes, but we need some prints to go with them. And so I started doing prints and I loved it. I took to it like a duck to water. And one of the things that I did was scale because what I realized was mm. that some of the, 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 most of the patterns I had seen, uh, this was Debbie Mum time and little thimbleberries and tiny little, yeah, little tiny things. little prints, which are lovely to work with, and nothing wrong with them, except that I wanted something a bit more panache. So something, you know, like... Like that. Yeah. I, I mean, the first thing I did was, was a Swiss chard, which was not unlike this, big Swiss chard plant. That's very like your yeah. needlepoint designs, though, the, um, yeah. the cabbages and the great... Exactly, exactly. So, when you do a fabric collection, you think about variants of scale, having yeah. big scales and smaller scales. And then how, yeah. where, where do you start then on colour? How does that come together? Well, I start, I, I know people love red and they've got to have a good red fabric, so I do mm. that. And then we've got to have a good blue fabric and a good green fabric. Yeah. And then we have to have a nice pastel. And then lately I've been doing grey and kind of contrast of black and white in the pattern somewhere so that there's this kind of Lovely well, I know in edgy. your new fabric collection, you've started to really explore sharp contrasts. Yeah. Where does that come from? Well, by just looking at old quilts and seeing what works. Okay. And seeing that every once in a while there's a jazzy little print that has quite a nice little profile and it's showing up and I'm, my eye is spotting mm. that. So the kind of the black and white against the colour. Exactly. I know you've introduced exactly. that. Exactly. If it's all lovely colours, and it's off so far, it can end up looking like a bowl of chop suey. You know, you know, <laughs> you don't, there's no there there. Yeah, you know, true. you need a little, little fresh accent, mm. you know, a sharpness here and there. So when you design the fabric, do you draw and paint it first? Yeah. Is that how it is? It yeah, yeah. I, I draw, you draw it all out. Or paint? What's, yeah, what's do it out. And I paint it by hand. Okay. Um, I've, I've worked with people on computers, and I'm never as satisfied as when I sit down and mix my paint right, okay. and actually paint it on, I get a better result. And I'm thinking, because it's the process, working with your hands, the creative ideas are flowing. I'm mm. thinking for the next colorway, I'm going to do so and so. That's all going on while I'm painting out one. So when you do a fabric design, I know you know when you've done your oranges and all the different colors. Yeah. Do you paint those yourself in the different colors to oh, see yes. how they work? Oh, definitely. It's not just what I do is I print out the first colorway mm. or the lightest colorway, and then I sit down and I paint right over that printout all the different colors, the different combinations. Okay. So it's, I get everything in the right place and it's quick and easy to do. And then once I presume somebody then puts them into on the computer and then it's printed out, yeah. what happens, how much say do you then get in the design process or how much involvement do you get after oh, it's... Oh, they, they send all the um, first examples of the printing to me. Mm. So, I, I, get, so um, I get to look at everything and I say, this one's fine, this one has got a big mistake in it. You know, the colors aren't in the right order or the, they're not intense enough in the background mm. or whatever. And so I correct that. Okay. And then the next strike off, I get like three strike offs 
and then they want you to be but done. But then they say, right, not yeah, say. This is enough <laughs> <laughs> already. So, so you have to get really good at, at what I do is I, I pick a color that they've already printed mm. so that I know that the color is going to be exactly what I want. Okay, so you, that's good. So you have quite a lot of involvement yeah, in yeah. that. So the, your new design, your K Facet path, the K Facet Collective. Yeah. So you work with Brandon and Philip Jacobs with this. Yeah. Why did you choose those two? Well, first of all, I, I chose Philip because he is, um, he was a fabulous fa uh, designer of furnishing fabrics. And so mm -hmm. he had scale, big peony roses and, you know, gorgeous, uh, you know, size prints. And I like that, the scale. And also he was very careful about his botanical drawing. He was very accurate. And I like that, the mm. old fashioned approach to design. So th th that took care of him. And then what he did, the first thing he said to me was, I really don't like doing colorways. And I said, match it to my ears <laughs> yeah, I because do. I love doing <laughs> okay. them. So you just step aside, I will do all your colors. And so I do all the colors for Phillips. I just respond to the fabric, you know, if it, if it reminds me of something that should have a gray background mm. and be sort of softer, then I'll go with that. I, I just respond to what's there. But anyway, what, then when we come to Brandon, what we had was a guy who is self-taught, has this absolute fresh approach to design. It's like, you know, I often say when people say to me, you know, what, what does art mean to you? And I say, well, have you ever seen a boring child's drawing? They, <laughs> they don't exist, they're fabulous. Mm. Every child has this instinctive way, unless they're completely pressed down, mm. they have a wonderful way of expressing themselves. Well, Brandon is the eternal child. <laughs> okay. And his designs are so fresh and they're very graphic. And so he Well, does, his amaze fabric is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a well, really, yes. very graphic, but yeah. a really I mean, good he, background. I, I showed him an old Dutch tile, and I said, you know, in the corners, they're doing this weird mm. little geometric thing. And he took that idea and made it completely his own. Um, and that's it. That's the thing is, he responds to an idea very, very well. And, uh, and he has this complete confidence to do it in his own style. Mm. And uh, his jumble, I'm just looking here, and his... Things, you know, the, these the become classics and they, 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 they fill our, our um, collections and they, they complement. They're, they're that little bit of nice geometric sharpness. So they do complement what you do then? Totally. Like, like you know, when we do our books, I mm. lay the whole book. Uh, I, I don't lay it out. I let somebody lay it out and then I say, all right, wrong you're page. brilliant up to this point and then you completely lose the okay. plot. You've got to get a wider shot here. We've got to do this. We've got to make mm. this a bigger picture, this a smaller picture. And so all of that is controlled uh, from our studio. You know, we, because we, in the old days, I used to just let people do the books and then they wouldn't quite be right and they didn't sell the, the vision that we had. Now. So somebody else puts these in. But the, if you were given one of these, yeah. what would you do with it? Oh, I would love it. What would because you do with it? What, what I would do is look through, <laughs> I would throw them all over the floor so that you mm. can look at them all spread out and then just start to play. Um, you know, the idea that you have these, like that little little buttons. I love that. You know, uh, which is a, a tight little pattern. And then you've got Brandon's shark's teeth. Mm. You know, look at the fresh, how that little saturated color with that very oh, fresh geez. cutting black and white. Wonderful. So would you just simply join them together or would you want to be cutting and piecing and pin whaling and half square? Oh, I, I <laughs> cut everything and put it up on the wall. I, I, I have this work wall, you know, which is the... Oh, the design wall. Yeah, there's a design wall, mm. which is invaluable. Before I discovered that, I used to just fold up things like handkerchiefs on the floor and stand on a bed and try to get it right. And it never was quite right. Whereas when you have that wall and you can place your mm, pieces and you can really arrange the whole quilt, you can see it take away all the things that don't work, add the things that do. This is the most invaluable tool, I think. Yeah, and, no, we, we sell them on Sony, and I know they're yeah. very popular because... Yeah, well, they should be. <laughs> yeah. They're a great, great tool for working. Okay. So the book, the book, the new book, Quilts yeah. in an English Village. Um, your 23rd book. Yeah. 23rd. <laughs> um, so I know you've written books from everywhere, from the Cotswolds to Burano. Yeah. Why Lavenham? 
Well, well, I mean, obviously, loving him is beautiful, yeah. but why? Yeah. Well, what did I you always do him? is when I'm going to do a book, I try to think of a location that has my paint box possibilities. Right. You know, I've tried enough color. You know, like people will say, you must come to our little town in Italy. And I'll say, well, show me pictures of that little town. <laughs> and the whole town is carved out of stone. So it's one color. It's the color of, stone. you know, carved, you know, lovely honey color. Mm. But that's one possibility. We've got quilts that are pink yeah. and black yeah, that's true. and green yeah. and red and blue. So, you know, you want all of that. Well, Lavenham was a town that I was taken to when I first started to knit. Oh, so a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. And I remember going through that town and thinking, what great knitting patterns these buildings would be. They're all these half-timbered buildings, mm. these great patterns, geometric patterns. But the colors behind those patterns were so beautiful that they painted things, you know, primrose yellow and pale green and soft apricot color. Oh, my goodness. And so when I went back there, and after all these years, there's still enough colored buildings that uh, it made it just a Do wonderful they location. Them? Sorry? Do they repaint them? They must do. To keep them like that. Yeah, they must do. They keep it going. And that's, that's what I said the introduction to my book was, thank you to this town for preserving <laughs> these yes. beautiful old buildings, keeping them in good nick. Mm. So we see that beautiful craftsmanship, that beautiful sense of order of the old artisans and these wonderful colors. And that, that town keeps it going, it's so wonderful. And it's off the beaten track, it's a tiny little place. So did you choose the place? When you choose all oh, these? I totally these. chose the place, yes. Okay, yeah. um, and when you design, did your designs, did you stay there? Did you just go and take yes. the photos? Yes, oh yeah, we stayed right in the middle and walked out every morning. You know, a lot of our shoot would be like, seven o'clock in the morning, okay. you know, because we would just creep out and we would see something as the sun was coming up on the on a beautiful apricot colored building and you'd have mm. your quilt just tuning in with it. It was the most wonderful shoot. The photographer and I afterwards said, this is one of the happiest shoots we've ever done. We were really delighted with so it. So what's your favorite quilt from the whole book? You know, one of my favorites is this one that's on the table. Okay. <laughs> and this this particular one of Philip Jacobs and these very soft colors with that gray background is, it is one of my favorites too. It's a beautiful one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, and, and obviously it's all the cotton candy pinwheels. That yes, one. cotton candy pinwheel. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you work with um, Lisa Pry Lucy on yes. this book. Yes. So, and you've known her for a long time. Absolutely. She's obviously an expert quilter. So why did you decide to work with her on this well, book? Well, she, she is one of those people who um, was a yarn rep. And mm. she went out and she found my book uh, in New York, and she was so excited about it, she couldn't believe it that somebody had written a knitting book. She was in this knitting world. But anyway, she bought six copies of the book and <laughs> sent them to her mother and all of her best friends. And that night, the company called her up and said, would you be a rep for our wow. yarns? And she said, oh no, I've got too many things mm. going. And they said, well, we've got Kay Facet in this new book, Glorious Knitting. And she went, I could have had them wholesale. Anyway, she decided to join our group and she understood me. She absolutely understood what I was doing with the colors of the knitting and mm. the old patterns and everything. And so one day she called me up and she said, I'm starting to work with patchwork and I've had a baby and I'm making patchwork quilts and you should get into it, Kate. And I said, oh, I'm too busy with needlepoint and knitting yeah, and, yeah. and painting and everything. She said, no, really get into it. And she started um, making taking my knitting patterns and making them into blocks. Well, and, I was going to say, yeah. is it true she introduced you to quilting? Yeah, absolutely. She dragged me wow. into it, kicking and screaming. <laughs> so we've got a lot to thank her for then. Oh, yeah. So when you work together, how do you decide who's going to do which quilt? Is it a collaboration? Yeah, well, they, they'd like me to do most of the designs in the book, so that that's a kind of given, but mm. she sews them for me. So I, I mock everything up on my work wall, and then I send the pieces to her. And she says, they're cut too small, they're stingy. <laughs> <laughs> so she recuts everything and sews it together beautifully. Um, and then she does her own versions for the book as well. Yeah, no, I've seen this. There were some of the specifically yeah. to her. But you, in your designs, are like, well, particularly with this one, you use a lot of pinwheels and tumbling blocks, which are very 
geometrical shapes. Yeah. But that sort of positioned with your fabric, which isn't, how, yeah. is that why you mix the two? I'm a traditional quilter. Okay. You know, I, you know, I looked at the history of quilting, and that's what dragged me into it, really, was because when, when Liza suggested it, I thought, well, some of the most beautiful art I've ever seen on the face of this planet are patchwork quilts. And so I was ready to get into that world, really, even though I resisted it. But I love the traditions, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I, 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 can't, I can't see any reason to be doing far out in, and reinventing the wheel all the time because there's so much of that beautiful language mm. of the blocks, the old blocks, that I'm very happy just to stay there. And I, I find that they work with the big patterns I've got. I find ones that have bigger pieces in, the, in them so that they really express, you know, when I've got a big, you know, a big leaf print, thing like, yes. I can really yeah. show it rather than chopping it up into t tiny pieces. I think it works really well. I think mixing the sort of the big floral curved prints with the geometry of the quilting works really yeah. well. So who made all the quilts in the book? Did you make them? Well, the quilts, some of the quilts are made by Liza and designed by Liza, mm. but there's also a wonderful group here in England called Janet Haig and her studio, and uh, oh, yeah. Julie and Ilaria are two of the most fabulous quilt makers. What I call a fabulous quilt maker is somebody you can throw a design that's kind of <laughs> half-baked at, and they take it and they make the best out of it and they understand what it is you're trying to express. And the maths. And the maths <laughs> and, you know, the correct sewing and yes. all of that. the seam allowances yeah, yeah, and exactly. all the technical And it's things. beautiful. Um, and they are absolutely brilliant. And it's wonderful when, when I have a big show of quilts and they come along to the show, <clears throat> I'm so proud that they can see mm. Well, it's lovely you've got a stand here with all of the quilts, and it is stunning to see the whole collection together. Yeah. And they made them. Yeah, and they made them. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And one thing we forgot about was Harry Potter. Did yes. you know? Yes. When you the, chose Lavenham. I absolutely didn't know because <laughs> I haven't really been a follower of, of uh, Harry Potter that much. Uh, but this was his birthplace. And uh, In the film. Extraordinary, yeah. Amazing, isn't well, it? Well, I mean, and it's not surprising. Because well, it sort of It has fits, such a sense it? of history, particularly yes. that wonderful big building in the middle, where, which they use as yeah. his house, which is just a brilliant. And it's quite atmospheric as well. I think it's yes. a medieval village Absolutely. originally, isn't it? Um, so for a complete beginner, what, what would you suggest they start with in this book? What's Whoa. the easiest quilt? Um... Probably that one that's behind us, the, sun, the peach. Pe peach Sunset, is it called? Yeah, this yes. one. Shall I give yes. that to you to hold? Yes. This, I mean, I love, yeah. I know that we're, we're See, going to be See, this is just square. a kit for that one. I mean, it's with, beautiful, with borders, isn't it? But this wonderful fabric of Brandon's in the background, just yeah, this lovely, soft kind of thing. Well, it works really well, and the stripes yeah. all against those prints, doesn't it? That, I like it up that way. But yeah, this is, I, I, I like this. And then on the back, we have that backing <gasps> fabric wow. of the big peonies. Gorgeous, isn't it? So for a beginner, is... start with that one. Yeah. And then work your way through the whole lot. Yeah. Um, you work with Debbie Patterson, the photographer, yes. on this book. Um, how important is the photography in the book and what oh, input do you have the in it? The photography is so important. I've worked with a lot of different photographers through my time because I, when I couldn't make any money selling my paintings, mm. I used to model. Did and you? So, yes. And so, what? so I was just male, male, yeah, clothes. <laughs> and you know, I would I would go from my house where I had nothing but charity finds, mm. and I would put on these, you know, suits, velvet suits, wow. and just fantastic things, you know. And and so I got it out of my system of wearing fancy clothes. Mm. And, and they didn't let you keep them. No. That's really mean. No, no, <laughs> far from it. But anyway, um, I, I was one of the cheapest models going. I didn't make that much money. <laughs> but uh, so I got used to a lot of different photographers and their approach. And when I found Debbie, she had a sense of color. She understood what I was doing with my color, which not everyone does, you know. And she would give me the kind of cropping and 
I mean, it's just been wonderful. I've worked on many, many, many books with her, and every time we go to do a book, I mm. think of, now, how will Debbie photograph this? Okay. So we have a really good relationship. I can understand those film crews where they have the same cameraman and the yes, same yes, no, that sound does make man sense, and so forth, it? you know, for years. So the quilts, we're going to be selling kits to make some of the quilts in the book, sadly not all of them. Um, and we talked, to, we talked about this one. Yeah. I love the cottage garden flowers. I think that's my favorite. What was your right. inspiration for that one? Well, uh, first I of all, did. I love Snowball. That, 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 that's one of the great... Um, okay. One get of me. the great... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yes. There we are. Yes, we couldn't get them all This is all called Instant us. TV. Instant uh, TV, yeah. So this is, this is taking, you know, big fussy cut flowers. Yes. And making this snowball design where you cut the corner off of your flower print mm. and you make it round or, or, or appear to be round. And there's something about um, that that's very exciting. And then the scale of these, you know, I have big flowers. So being able to, you know, zero in on a flower so when you fussy cabin. cut these, are you quite yeah. specific? You know, or do you say to people, just cut them wherever you want, or do you really want them to position the you flowers? You can cut wherever you want. These have been cut less specifically than I would have done myself, personally. But even so, it still is very flowery and exciting. But if people want to see how it really is, come to the festival, and I've got a, yes. you know, my original one. Oh, is up okay. There. The and you can see the way I zeroed in and very carefully cut around a big flower to make it really because bullseye. these hexagons are big, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you know, and and sometimes you know, getting three quarters of a flower or half a flower is just as effective. Mm. But I like to zero in. Bang Onto on the it. big one. So this yeah. would be quite good for beginners as well, isn't it? Once you've worked yes, out the snowball. Very, balling. very simple. You know, we do a workshop on this where we just have people put up squares of fabric mm. and then they take the little corner bits and put it on. And it's so quick and easy. And you just sew those on the corner of your square and, and you've got done. your quilt. Um, another one we're doing is the Ancient Glades, which is behind you. And I yes. love that one because yes. it's so green. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. You know, it's very interesting. Two young fellows were hanging our exhibition, and we said to them, do you like any of the quilts that you're hanging? And this one guy said, oh, the one I love is Ancient Clay. Is that and he okay? said, it's so intriguing. He said, every time I look at it, I see something different. And it's true that there's, it's more subtle, more... You know, what I responded to with this was the mossiness of England. <laughs> it will. That's due yeah. to the wetness. Yes. But, but <laughs> you know, the beautiful side of that wet mm. is you get these beautiful patches of moss and lichens and things growing that are so beautiful. And we found these beautiful old gates in this forest. Yes, now to the show photos the in the book, isn't against. it? Oh, we my should, God. Um, it was the most fabulous setting. Be beautiful. I uh, think it's probably my yeah. favorite photo, yeah. which is why yeah. I don't know whether you can yeah. hold she, it up to just show. Just wonderful. Look at that. Um, Those gates are just... And you see, I, th you know, just th making us think about the mossiness and the mm. beautiful subtlety of colour. I mean, the, the thing about England is it has these very often overcast skies, <laughs> so you get lovely, mm. subtle colour. The gardens become enchanted for me. When I'm used to very harsh, hard light in California, and, it, you know, it it really does away with the subtlety of mm. color. It's very hard to see subtleties. But here in this light, it, one English woman said to me, I love England, it has a pearly light. A pearly light. We think isn't of it as a gray drizzling light. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite nice, But I love it? It. it. To me, it is pearly. Um, what was one of the others? Oh, the dark watermelon. So we have that yes. one there. Yeah. And is it called that because of the watermelons on it? That's right, exactly. Particularly, you know, here we've got um, in the center, yeah, these, you'll notice this big mm, panel of, of uh, watermelons. Mm. And it's all quilted round. I mean, watermelons yeah. are really popular as a theme at the moment, but the color choice well, is so yeah, different. And, and also it's natural stripes. So you get these yeah, wonderful true, stripes true. happening. Um, leafy diamonds, we have, I've seen leafy diamonds around. Oh, I have think you, I'm sitting you, on, You're I'm sitting on leafy <laughs> diamonds. So what was the inspiration behind that one? Um, I love diamond shapes because, you know, you can 
put a big flower print or a big leaf print into a diamond shape and it's very stunning. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I do a lot of diamond shaped quilts. Is that good for the sort of the fussy cutting and the placement of the print then? Yes, the it diamond. can be, or, or you can do it any old way. You know, I like a big overall print that you yes. can just chop it. And then oh. finally, I think the cotton candy pinwheels, which is the yeah. one on our table that we yes. talked about. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, well, I love soft, dusty pinks. And, you know, there is just it something. Is. So, what I know. <laughs> we don't want to. I'm going to put them on the floor. It's going to be a very wet quilt, isn't it? But anyway, yeah. So, I, I, I've, I had a lovely time with the palette of this. Mm. I mean, it's quite unusual the way you've designed this because it's not your traditional pinwheel. You've got yeah. one one side and then you've got a strip and a. And yeah, a I, I was looking at some old, wonderful layout. You know. It is, yeah, it's quite a traditional design, yeah. isn't it? Um, so, thank you for today and talking me through this, but I've got a right. few questions, quick yeah. questions yeah. to finish it off. How do you start your day? I start my day uh, usually going to the heath and having a swim in an outdoor pond, wow. even in the winter no. when they break the ice for us. Those are the old, I don't do that so much anymore. <laughs> but I did for years, I wow. did that. So yeah. wild water swimming? Wild water swimming, exactly, yeah. Wow. Sewing or knitting? Knitting. knitting. I love knitting. You know, knitting is one of the most gorgeous things to do. It's just beautiful. Pink or blue? Pink. <laughs> Tea or coffee? If you had to give uh, one up. Yeah, all right, I, I'll, I'll, tea. Tea, tea. And I think I know the answer to this one from what you said, the past or the future? Oh, the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an old fashioned, <laughs> old, stuck in the mud, you know, romantic. <laughs> I'm looking back all the, the time. The past. What are you most proud of? Uh, turning people on and, and, and having them overcome their fears and use color generously. What makes you really cross? Uh, people being mean and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, making you do little fussy rules about things. <laughs> bureaucracy. <laughs> yes, bureaucracy. <laughs> yes. What book have you read the most? Uh, the Road Home uh, by uh, Rose McCauley. Okay. Rose Tremaine, sorry. Rose, Rose Tremaine. Tremaine. Rose yeah, Tremaine, I, I got it. Uh, yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant book. And I was going to do it for a book club, so I had to reread it. Mm. And I loved rereading it. It was better the second okay. time. Okay. That's good. So if you've not read that, yeah. you need to. Do you have any phobias? Um, Brandon is doing a spider spiders. behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like spiders. spiders. I don't like creepy crawlies. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me an unusual fact about yourself that we wouldn't know. I don't have a mobile phone. Really? Absolutely not. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. That is really unusual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting for another question. Um, What's your favorite food or meal that you couldn't live without? Um, I would say breakfast. Oh, yes. Yeah, a good, good a breakfast good, will what set, would that be? set me up for the day. It'd be fresh fruit mm. and uh, granola, a really good handmade, homemade granola, and um, yogurt and uh, nice, uh, a whole meal toast. Oh, that sounds lovely. Um, and coffee, you, of course. And coffee. Yeah, yeah. What one possession could you not do without? And I asked a few people this and they said my mobile phone, but you can't yeah, do right. that, so that's really good. <laughs> um, possession could I not do without? Uh, my glasses. <laughs> yes, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I'm calling I'm it. I was just thinking, what, what, what do I always Wait, check yeah. to put in my pocket before I leave I the house? I was going to say, I did say my sewing machine, I, but then I could hand sew. So yeah, yeah. you're right, my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I've been lost. Um, what's your favourite film and why? Ooh. 
I would say my brilliant career. It's an Australian film. Okay. Absolutely wonderful about a girl raised on a farm and, and with pigs and uh, but she has this vision. She wants to be a writer and she wants to go places I've never seen and do that. things. And she just becomes this amazing author. It's a most wonderful film. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna Very watch that. romantic and beautiful score of music. Um, what do you collect? Or do you collect anything? I collect Buddhas. Uh, okay. Big, fat, laughing Buddhas mm. covered with little children <laughs> <laughs> sitting on their shoulders and things. I just love them. They're old Chinese oh, wow. um, statues that I have a lot of. What's your secret to staying young? My secret for staying young? Pilates. Pilates? Pilates and well. color. I would mm. say color is like an... Uh, like getting a blood transfusion <laughs> every so often, you know. Mm. You, being around color just keeps your spirits up. So that's very good. But Pilates keeps my balance because okay. I am in danger of falling downstairs these days. You know, you get older and you get kind yeah. of, you know, <laughs> weird on stairs. So you, ha you have to watch those things and Pilates helps. Okay. Why the UK? Do you miss America? I love the old world, and, the um, and I love the humor here in England. <laughs> it's, I had to get used to the humor here in England, but when I did, it was, it's very funny and very subtle. It's quite dry, quite subtle. Very dry, and, a bit and dark. I love that, I love that. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, that, that's why I would say I've started, but I, I like being on the edge of Europe too, and Scandinavia and mm. all of those countries. I like being close to the old world. Okay. Um, what has been the best part of lockdown for you? The best part of lockdown for me was um, going into my archive and trying to weed out uh, big swatches of knitting that I had done that were um, maybe past their sell-by date or something that I could get rid of. I found that I could get rid of very little and I looked at them and I thought, these should be sewn together into patchworks. And so I, <laughs> I made 35 or 37 huge patchwork no. things of my knitting samples wow. all sewn together. And I want to have an exhibition of them somewhere. Yeah, what did you do? If a museum is listening out there. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I live just around the corner from the American Museum in Bath. Oh, right. So I'll go and have a word. Yeah, yeah. That would Great. be nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would. Um, what would you like to learn how to do, but you haven't had time yet? Um, well, there's many things I would like to learn. Um, more crafts, you know, um, crochet. Crochet. Yes. Crochet. To make yes. crochet lace. I find crochet mm. lace absolutely charming. It's beautiful. Particularly when it's done in colors. Mm. And I've seen some people do wonderful things with that. So that, that would be fun okay. to learn. Where's your favorite place to go on holiday? Uh, somewhere like uh, South Africa or uh, Morocco, you know, uh, that's got a sense of history and yes, they're still yeah. mired in the past. Mm. You know? I'm, I'm loving that past. So, so when a past is alive and kicking, you know, like in the Arab countries, they're still back in the dark ages, and I love it. I love the way they, they have the old tools and the old fabrics and mm. things. Okay. What, um, what one thing inspires you the most? I would say the thing that inspires me the most is people's creativity. You know, like what people do with our fabrics. When we look through uh, Instagram and things mm. like that, and you see how people are taking my fabric and doing something so fresh and exciting with it. Um, I think that's very, that very inspiring. That inspires That's yeah. nice, isn't it? Um, what makes you really happy and laugh out loud? Uh, British humor. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. I mean, I could be, you know, rolling in the aisles over, you know, particularly on the on the radio, there's some wonderful, yeah. wonderful Radio Four drama. Wonder, yeah, Radio Four Love humor it. is hilarious. Mm. Brilliant. Do you have a favorite shirt? Because you have some amazing shirts. I do. I do have some good shirts. Don't mm, I? Do I just bought shirts. this recently. That's a very nice shirt. Yeah, I like this. Very, you know, mm. ecat, simple, fresh. Um, 
Do I have a favorite shirt? No, because I keep reinventing. <laughs> Just you know, switch ever. Yeah, I keep getting more shirts made of our fabrics, and it's fun. So finally, your top tips, knitting. The a top tip I would think with knitting is to use color and don't be afraid to use to, to create patterns mm. and to learn how simple it is to do it. It's not complicated. It looks Bobby Dazzler complicated, but it's not. And I only do the most basic knitting. I don't do fancy stitches at all. Um, so but uh, but you know, color. using color and pattern is opening yourself up into an imaginative world that is rich and rewarding. Sewing? Sewing, I, I, I do a bit of sewing. I sew some of my one-off quilts, mm. you know, just I'll take a, a, a lot of old fabrics and sew them together or whatever. And I really enjoy sewing. Uh, and I'm not very persnickety about it. I'm not terribly... Mm. It's a good word. Exact. Uh, uh, but it's just, if it holds together, that's fine. So don't worry about the me. detail. Then. Exactly. <laughs> Designing. If somebody wants to design, what's your... Uh, I would say the thing about designing is to push the boat out constantly, you know, get bolder. If you think of a statement, like they used to say about the um, Impressionist painters, that they would take an idea and they would exaggerate it. So if they saw that snow, the shadow on snow was slightly blue, mm. they would make it blue lavender in the okay. painting. Do you know, they would exaggerate yeah. it. and make you feel it emotionally. And that's what we want, is to feel when we see a wonderful mm. patchwork quilt or whatever. And so I would say to a designer, um, exaggerate, you know, go to extremes. Because then it shows up. And the last one, how to be happy. Oh, don't be ashamed to do what you love to do. <laughs> okay. And just sit there and do it day after day. I mean, I, I sit in my studio and I knit or I stitch mm. a needlepoint or I sew a quilt binding. I love to do bindings, mm. um, and things like that. You know, those little tasks that are just repetitive and soothing and make you feel good. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. Thank you so much. Will you sign the book for us? We're going to I give would love this to book sign the book, to, yes. Um, We'll have a special giveaway um, yeah. on our on Saturday, and this will be Wonderful. the prize. All right. Hand signed by you, especially. And Thank big and so bold. Much. Big and bold, <laughs> and we but not very colourful. 2021, aren't we? Or is it 22? No. 21. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Still. All the years are just sort <laughs> of melding together. I know. 2021. I know. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, That's been great. a pleasure to talk to you. Lovely. Thank you. Good interview. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>So thank you so much for talking to me, Kate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, our Sewing Street audience are going to love this. A lot of them can't come to the Festival of Quilts, so mm. hopefully we brought a little taste for them mm. here and yeah. enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you very much. <laughs>